final sequence for you guys uh, on the Rui missed free throw? Uh, Russell has a knack for just um, doing the, the out of nowhere plays. He was on the left side above the three point line. It looks like he knew that the ball was going to be off and he raced in there and went underneath the entire defense in a split second and got all the way to the ball, was able to deflect it. And then Brad was able to gobble it up and prevented them from getting the chance, uh, which was, you know, those are the plays that only a handful of guys in the league that can make those type of plays can go, you know, 25 feet and get the get a deflection or get you know get a bit, bit of the ball and then Brad picked it up but it was it was obviously a, a big play that prevented them from having a chance to tie what do you think uh was the key to getting in that position in the first place obviously you guys were down 16 at one point I thought I thought we came out in that third quarter and uh, we made we made a little bit of adjustments and one was just getting our mind right and not worrying about anything else other than playing basketball. And, and I thought Rui did a good job defensively. Kawhi is obviously, you guys know, he's MVP type player. Uh, he might be the MVP this year, but I thought Rui did a great job of, of guarding him tonight. Uh, he's not easy. I mean, he makes those shots that you think that they, you can't do much other than that, what he, what we do. And uh, I thought, but I thought Rui's, Rui's energy and defensive toughness uh, helped us win this game. And Russell willed us to win this game as well. I thought Russell was playing pretty good uh, throughout the game and he gave us a chance. And Brad did not have a good shooting game, but I love the fact that he got to the free throw line. Uh, and that's a, that's a great, that's, I mean, he's obviously as matured as, as a player since I've been here, but that's another level right there. He, he didn't have his stuff. He missed about five easy bunnies in that first half, but he got to the free throw line and didn't let it get him down. Fred. Scott, what's, what's your reaction when you see that the Clippers are intentionally fouling Russell that early to send him to the line? Yeah, I mean, Russell has not shot the ball well from the free throw line. That's, there's no, I mean, you, you can't run, run from that, and I don't run from it. I still trust him. I've seen enough of them that I know, and and I like the, what he's doing. He's working on it. It's, he's changed the, the, some things, a little bit of a tweak here and there. We we're going to get it back. He's going to be back in the mid to high seventies, and I don't. I mean, I want him to make them. He wants to make them. His teammates want him to make them, and that's all I care about. And he's not going up there trying to miss. He does so many great things for us. The professionalism that he brings is, I would take that a thousand times over a missed free throw here and there. Even five free throws, I'll take them. Maybe not eight, but five for sure. And then you you guys have, it's it's kind of late enough into the season now. It's kind of jarring. You guys have a significantly better record against teams over 500 than you do against teams under 500. Do you view that as a positive, as as a negative, uh, and, and why why do you think that is? Uh, I don't. I do not know. I just know that we're playing much better basketball uh, since we've had everybody feeling much better about you know their condition. Uh, and then you know we we have to we're going to have to play really good basketball because we got you know we got Memphis and Philly, Milwaukee, Milwaukee. And, some tough teams coming up, uh, Utah, Sacramento, Utah. So, I mean, there's a lot of – we got to play well. I mean, but we're, we're playing much better. Uh, I messed up in the Boston game, but I thought, you know, last game or the, the six minutes of eight turnovers in that second quarter made us look really bad. And I don't – I mean, take away – I mean, you can't take it away, but I didn't think we played as bad as the final score there. But we're playing better and we just got to keep we got we got to take a break and we deserve a break the whole league deserves a break and but we got to enjoy it and relax and embrace what's in front of us our goal is to make the playoffs and and challenge each other to 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 get better and help each other get better and and fight for that spot Ava 
thought we've asked you about it a lot, but how important was it to number one, kind of cap that little blip at two losses and then um, two, obviously send your guys into the break with a win like this. It's a, it's great. I mean, we wanted to come in and win. I mean, we knew, we knew what, you know, Paul George said it was a, it was a must win for them. So we knew that they were going to be locked in. Uh, but I thought, I thought, I thought we played, I thought we played pretty good throughout the game, even though they had a, a, a pretty good lead in that stretch. But we missed, I, I want to say it during the, we missed like eight or nine layups that we should have made. And even our and ones, I thought they could have been just one free throw instead of two. But can't worry about that. I'm glad we won. It's going to be a nice uh, breakaway with the win. But we know that we have our, we have our work cut out for us. But we're going to embrace the challenge and enjoy each other during this challenge. And and have some fun. That's what it, that's what it's about. We we a lot of things happen to us to put us in this hole, but we're not making excuses. We're going to challenge each other to get out of it. And and what what a great story it's going to be when it happens. And you mentioned Rui's defense, but kind of across the roster, how different was the physicality in this game compared to the last Clippers game? Yeah, much. I mean, night and day, night and day. I mean, even though we battled and cut it to five. Um, uh, in that fourth quarter, I, but I thought, I mean, they had the game in, under control throughout the game and, and they knew it. They just let off the gas and then they put it back on. But tonight, tonight, it was much different. I thought we played uh, some good basketball. I thought we could have made, you know, some layups. It would have made it even a, a, a closer, you know, first half. But I'm happy that we won the game. I'm just, I just know that it's, you know, it's nice to, if you do uh, lose a game, don't don't let it be a long streak. And, you know, two game streak was long enough, but we got our work cut out for us uh, coming after this break. And like I said, we just got to rest up and regroup when we get back, recharge our batteries. Brad, what was your reaction? You obviously caught the rebound at the end there, but did you even see Russ kind of streaming in from the three point line in the last play? Uh, first praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, Initially, I didn't, but then I seen a red jersey just flying out of nowhere. And uh, I just knew it had to be rushed. It couldn't be nobody else doing that. Uh, so, you know, that was definitely a heads-up play, smart play um, at the end of the game. Uh, just keeping the ball alive and, you know, making a play for us. And we, we were able to, I was able to come up with the rebound and dribble it out. A hell of a heads-up play by Russ. And you've spoken about how important it is to carry momentum from the first half into the second half. Um, have a win like this, a physical win over kind of an up, upper class team. What's that do for you guys going into the break here? Uh, it was great, you know. Uh, but we always still have that mindset. We still we still got a lot more work to do. We still haven't accomplished much. Uh, you know, it was a great way to end our break. But you know, the team that beat us before this, we got them the first game coming out. Uh, so we we definitely still got that in the back of our head, and you know, we got to make sure we're ready to go come next week. Chase. Brad, given how much uh, turnovers were a problem for you guys uh, in your last game, how important was it to only commit nine of them tonight? I just looked at that. Uh, what else? That's that's key for us, man. Whenever we're able to just take care of the ball, get a shot up every possession, uh, we think that's what's best for us. You know, give ourselves an opportunity to put points on the board uh, versus the other team. So, you know, to see we only had nine tonight, you know, that's just a testament to us just moving the ball and sharing it, making the right play, being unselfish and uh, and just having fun, man. That's 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 really good to see. You know, uh, whenever we're turning the ball over, not getting shots up, you know, I think tonight we were a lot more active cutting, a lot more ball movement, player movement. Uh, I think a lot of times when we're stagnant, that's where a lot of our turnovers come in. And so it's good to be able to see us uh, get back on track. And uh, I'm not sure if you saw because you were actually playing in the game, but uh, you were drafted to the same all-star team as Jason Tatum. I know you guys were kind of rooting for that. What, what's your reaction to uh, being able to play with him? Oh, I'm excited about it. You know, we, uh, we've we never been on the same team before ever in life. I don't even think in pickup we've been on the same team. Uh, so it, it was, it's just, it's definitely great to be able to share the same floor with him. You know, I'm always, I'm one of his biggest fans and I'm proud of his growth and his maturity at a young age. He's only 23 now. So, you know, for him to be able to be on the stage he's at, you know, at the time of in his career, is, it's heartwarming for me, uh, you know, but I'm just happy that we're able to share the floor together as starters, uh, making a name for ourselves, our city, and our families.
Fred. Brad, I know you don't have to do it anymore, but you competed against Rob for eight years before you were teammates. I, normally, guards do not fly in for rebounds the way that he does. What's that like when you're matching up against a guy who has to do that and you have to totally change the way that you like you even conceive of box outs against someone like that? So that's another thing you have to, I mean, you have to be accountable with Russ for, you know, uh, he's not only a great slasher, mid-range shooter, uh, but, you know, he, he's able to get 10, 20 rebounds a night. You know, he's going to go in there and get offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. He's just flying in there, uses athleticism. And he does a great job of just reading where the ball is going to just fall off the hoop. Uh, you know, so he, for him to make plays the way he does, it, it keeps teams off balance. You know, a lot of teams like to get out and run and transition. Uh, you know, so that kind of slows that down a little bit with the next extra guy kind of crashing for us. I know we're not the biggest offensive rebounding team, but, you know, he does keep a lot of them alive for us. Uh, so, you know, whenever he crashes, we know that he, he's crashing with a purpose. And, uh, you know, they're always effort and, and well-needed plays from us. For us. So he's going to continue to do it. And, uh, you know, we just got to make sure that we come up on the right end of it and, and execute on the ones he does. Neil. Hey, Brad, late in the second, you guys were down 16. And then between the end of the first and the start of the second half, you guys went on a 21-2 to two run. What was the key in getting that done? Defense, you know, just getting stops. I think we did a better job of making guys uncomfortable. They were making a lot of threes from their early on game. Uh, and, you know, that second quarter was deadly. We gave up like 39 points, 40 points in that quarter versus 22 in the first. So uh, I think that's that was just – Lackadaisical, not being in rotation, not communicating. You know, we gave up a lot of open shots to, you know, Pat Bell, to Kennard. You know, those guys got going. And, you know, that kind of hurt us a little bit. But it was good for us to be able to stop that in the second half. Ben? Hey, Brad. Uh, obviously, there's been – there's a lot to process about everything that's happened the first half of the year for the team and for you individually. I'm just curious for yourself going into the All-Star break, when you think back at the first few months of the season, what stands out to you about this journey for you uh, at this point? Oh, man, it's been a lot of growth. I mean, it's been a it's been a rocky year for sure. Uh, from you know, camp starting the way it was, you know, our season starting late, you know, us having guys out for COVID early on. Uh, it, was, it, was just, it was just a weird year, you know, all around. But, you know, for to be in a position we're in, I don't know what a game and a half game out of eight now. You know, I think that's. I don't think anybody would have, would have guessed that. You know, guessing the first five six games we played in the year. You know, so uh, I think it's definitely a testament to our growth uh, and our maturity as a team. Uh, you know, to be able to learn from our mistakes early on, and then I think it's just coming together as a team, being healthy. You know, it's not a lot of practice time. A lot of things we're learning on the fly. Uh, so I think we're just doing a good job of adjusting as best as we can and uh, competing at a high level. So I guess I could say I'm happy with the way the first half is. Last question to Christos. Hello, Bradley. How, as uh, the leader of this team, how proud do you feel about the resiliency and the effort in the second, uh, the second half of your team and what it means about your potential? Oh, uh, you know, I was, I was, Super ecstatic about it. You know, we we've shown it not only tonight, but in, you know, the last about ten games or so that we we can be a resilient team. You know, we can show that we can guard, defend, and you know, be able to compete at a high level. Uh, you know, we did that tonight. Again tonight, we gave up thirty nine points in the quarter, and you know, we we stopped that in the second half tonight. But you know, in the second half of this season, the same mentality has to be had. You know, uh, our our schedule doesn't get any easier. We have thirty eight games seven to eight back-to-backs, you know, so it's, it's going to be tough on us, but we got to got to have the same mentality. Don't get tired of, you know, doing good, uh, doing the right things because, you know, we'll get rewarded in the end, you know, so it's it's just a matter of us staying the course and, uh, like you said, Christoph, continue to be continue to be resilient. And also, you mentioned after the first, the winning streak uh, of the last uh, week that you feel different. How different do you feel that uh, with uh, wins like uh, those caliber teams, like Clippers? Uh, we feel great, you know, obviously because, you know, they're a championship caliber team. Uh, all the guys they have over there, granted, Paul George is out tonight. 
but you know we we did a good job of not worrying about any of that, controlling what we can control, and just coming out and playing hard. You know, uh, we didn't get off to a great we got off to a good start. Second quarter wasn't so good, but you know we finished the game, we closed it out. You know, uh, you, early in the year we wouldn't have been able to do that, and you know our growth has been great. And whenever you're beating teams, you know, who are this caliber, it's just an extra boost of confidence moving move forward. What was your perspective on that uh, final play where uh, Russell Westbrook, you know, obviously came out of nowhere to redirect the rebound? Um, that dude has the – I mean, don't tell him that I said this, but he has the heart of a lion. I, uh, I don't want to give him too much credit, but he is unbelievable. He's um, – yeah, that's all I got to say. He's unbelievable, and um, I'm very privileged and happy to be his teammate. How unexpected is that, uh, a, a, just a guard to make that play? I mean, it's Russell Westbrook. I, in my opinion, one of the best rebounding guards in NBA history, so um, it's not really unexpected. Um, it's a will play, honestly, and um, yeah. I, mean, I told you what I think of it. I think it's unbelievable. And again, I'm extremely happy to be on the same side as it. Neil? Hey, Mo, you, you were a game high plus 26 in the minutes you played today. What do you think uh, brought the team success with you on the floor? Uh, I was just told that. Honestly, man, I. It's like one of these things, like it sounds good when it's up high, but you would never ask me about it if I, it was bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I don't really try to – I look at it all the time, but for me it's the plus minus. It's more like a long-term um, stat, and uh, one game can be a little skewed, I think, sometimes. But, man, it's – I'm happy it's in the positive, honestly. Um, I'm just trying to do my thing, talk as much as I can. I'm making a lot of mistakes. I know that I'm trying to get better, keep building trust in my defense, and maybe make a layup for once in a while, too. Um, couldn't really do that today, but, um, you know, get better defensively. It's kind of my main focus and keep us going energy wise. So if it works out great, if not, somebody else is going to step up and we're going to keep building. Ava? Mo, Scott mentioned um, a couple of mental adjustments you guys, you guys made uh, at halftime, just kind of emptying your minds and not worrying about that much. What was said at halftime in the locker room? What did you guys want to come out and focus on? I'm just going to act like I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to tell you. I, I don't really know what you were talking about. I forgot. Um, so let's just act like I'm not going to tell you. I really don't know. I don't remember. Uh, honestly, it's just I think it, with us, it all starts with energy. I think that's the main thing. I think that's probably what we talked about. Um, if we hit the other team first, I think we're in a good position. If we don't give up big quarters, 40-point quarters, I think we're in a good position to, to win the game, give us a chance. So uh, we've got to stay locked in and, and we can't give up like easy ones, you know. Um, but we'll get better uh, and stay locked in on that. And with the physicality that you guys talked about so much, the last time you played the Clippers, the physicality wasn't there the first time. Is that just a thing where you kind of have to decide, like, okay, I'm going to go and be tougher out tonight? Is that an effort situation? No, for sure. I think that's a main thing, too, with us. Like, we got to be physical. We got to be that team. I think Coach Brooks seems always been that way. I think that's one of his things, too. Like, play hard, whole game. If you suck that day, you suck that day. But at least you played hard. Um, that's kind of – at least that's how I think every day. Um, I might look awful out there. At least I hit somebody, you know. Um, so it's kind of got to be your mindset with this team. It's been working out if we're locked in all game, but um, we got to be more consistent. And I think we're starting to figure it out a little bit. Maximilian? Thank you for the opportunity. Hey, Mo, um, in einer Woche ist es ein Jahr her, dass die NBA die Saison abgebrochen hat. Letztes Jahr. Uh, wegen, wegen Covid. Um, welche Erinnerungen hast du an den Tag und uh, weißt du noch, wie du es erfahren hast und was deine ersten Gedanken da waren? Uh, you have to switch English and German. <lacht> no, I, I'm kidding. Um, ja, ich habe mit meinen Eltern darüber gequatscht, weil meine Großeltern waren hier letztes Jahr und sind eine Woche vor Covid dann abgehauen. 
und das war jetzt genau vor einem Jahr. Ähm, krass, wie schnell das Jahr dann doch vorbeigeht äh, und wie viel man lernt in so einem Jahr und glücklich, dass alle gesund sind in meiner Familie und ja, ähm, yeah. Ich bin glücklich, dass ich ein cooles Apartment hier habe, wo ich so viele Leute unterbringen konnte für drei Monate und ähm, hatte eigentlich eine ganz schöne Zeit mit meiner Familie in der Zeit. Ja, ich, ich meinte es auch mehr an den Tag selbst, also als die NBA die Entscheidung bekannt gegeben hat, also wie du, wie du dich quasi daran erinnerst, an deine Gedanken an diesen Tag, an diesen ja, ersten da, März. Ja, ähm, ich war Sushi essen, ähm, ich war Sushi essen und, dachte, und bin noch einkaufen gegangen zu Safeway, weil ich dachte, vielleicht müssen wir wirklich Lockdown machen und dann aus Joke bin ich Klopapier einkaufen gegangen. <lacht> Und dann ist tatsächlich passiert ähm, mit Rudi Gobert und all den Nachrichten. Ähm, und mein Handy ist explodiert natürlich. Und am Anfang war es so vier Tage Quarantäne. Und äh, dann vier Monate später sitzen wir immer noch da. Also äh, verrückter Tag, ich weiß noch ganz genau. Ähm, war selbst mit Sushi Toro in Dupont Circle. Shout out, ähm, weil Sushi essen ist sehr lecker. Und äh, seitdem haben sie nie wieder aufgemacht. Danke. Okay. Kellen? Sorry, I don't know how to speak German, so we'll have to switch back. I was going to say, I'm sorry. I apologize for y'all not listening to that. Um, yeah. So, you know, you, you mentioned, you know, you, you have fun or you enjoy playing with Russ. Like, when you see him play with that much energy, that much intensity, like, how does that impact your, impact your play and what have you learned from him? I mean, yeah, he's been great for me. Just uh, as personal growth as a player, I was thinking this before the game today, man. He's one of these players. I had a point guy in college that did this to me too, but he has more trust in me than myself sometimes. So that's just um, that's unbelievable to me. Um, he goes. What I respect about him, he he's not perfect. He knows it, and he works so hard every day. Uh, he takes his job so serious. I don't know how he calms down after games because he's always on. When you see him after like half times, he like hypes himself up, and I'm like, Jesus, this guy doesn't stop. Like, uh, so much respect for him. Obviously, been a huge fan growing up. Like, I watch Coach Brooks' teams all the time and OKC when I was little. So to be on the court with Russ at the same time and him telling me to shoot the ball is it's crazy, you know. Like, it's obviously awesome. And uh, again, I'm very grateful to be in this position and win some games with them together. Thanks, Mo. Last question to Matt Moderno. Hey, Mo, I'll send you out on a light one here. I'm assuming you finished watching the OC by now. What do you got lined up for the All-Star break? Ah, now you told everybody. Um, honestly, I've been yeah, slipping on my TV shows. If anyone has recommendations, please tweet them at me. Uh, I don't... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I have a hard time committing to something new all the time. You know, I kind of like the roles of the old show. So I kind of, every time I finish a show, I'm kind of stuck with that and rewatch something um, safe. But man, also, I honestly try to force myself to get a mental break a little bit and um, spend some time yeah, off basketball and then come back and go to Memphis. And I think it's 38 games left. <sighs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah. And we, we want to make the playoffs. So. That's kind of our focus. So do what you do to, to be able to do that. Yeah. So what was your vantage point and perspective on the, the final play there on the miss free throw with Russell? Well, I was just trying to get as close as possible to the rim. I'm like, I only, like I asked Russ after that, how the hell did he get to that rebound? But, you know, then I saw the clip after the game and, uh, you know, it made sense. He, just, he just went that way to the baseline. He got that quick, so. It was a big play for sure. Ava? Um, Davis, just what was the mood in the locker room? We're hearing obviously you guys are really happy with the win, but you're kind of not getting ahead of yourself saying there's a lot of work left to be done. Uh, of course, it was, it was great to get the win, uh, not let it, let it out of our hands at the end of the game. And, you know, just before the break, uh, you know, there's, there's something good to think about uh, going into the break and then uh, coming back just – play off of that and uh, definitely, you know, another confidence booster. And, uh, and you know, we, I think we did, a, we did a decent job uh, defensively. You know, they're, they're one of the best offensive teams in the league. And, uh, and you know, that gave us a chance to win. Um, how many stitches did you need? Uh, about five. 
and um, how are you going to spend your your break coming up here? Uh, just stay here in DC, spend time with my family. Uh, don't really want to travel, and uh, you know, you know, great is going to be sunny for a few days, so so I'm going to enjoy a little bit of out outdoor time with the family. Thanks, Thomas. Christos. Hello, Davis. Congratulations on the win. Thank How you. in the last 11 games you had eight wins and just three losses. How important for you is uh, about the second half of the season? And how important is to build on this uh, momentum? Well, that's, that's a simple answer. It's very important. But uh, I think this is really showing that what, what we're doing, we're doing the right things. Uh, we're coming together as a, as a group and uh, we're helping each other on the court. Uh, we're not just playing for, for ourselves uh, on both ends of the floor. We're playing as a team on both ends of the floor. And, uh, and that's been the key. And uh, building on it is, is the only way we're going to get to the playoffs. Thank you very much. And last question to Kellen. Hey, Davis, you said that you saw the replay of um, Russell's rebound. Did you watch a replay of your alley-oop dunk? Uh, I didn't get a chance to look at it. <laughs> What what was that? I mean, what was what was that? What you were trying trying to do? Like, were you too? Like, was that? Did you were you aware that you were going to kind of be a, a highlight? Uh, 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 it's hard to say. At that moment, when I jumped, I don't know why I felt like I don't know if I jumped high or not, but it just felt like it kind of slowed down a little bit. Once I turned my head, I was like, well, if I extend my arms, then I can just put it in the basket. So, so that's what it was. When I when I caught the ball, I looked at the rim. I was like, right there. So that, that made more sense than anything else at that moment. <laughs> and when you, uh, I think, a, well, I forget which game it was, but you, you, you like, uh, you just missed the three and kind of like had like a dunk after that. And now you have this one. Are you aware when you, you have like these highlight, uh, like real moments that go viral? Are you aware of that? Like you, do you watch it? Well, if I see it, some, you know, you scroll through Instagram, you see all these things. So, so I see it, uh, but you know, it's not really a surprise for me. I know I can do those things. I just don't do it very often. <laughs> but you know, I guess, you know, you got you, you to keep it to yourself sometimes. So it, uh, it's more fun for everybody else when I finally do it. <laughs>